Hi, I'm Mike, owner of the Ingroup in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm doing the new arrival video for October 6, 2023. Uh, holy crap, I'm gonna be here a while. I've got, this is like a record store day size new arrival video. Uh, I've got two rows in a pile here. I got a restock from Analog Productions. I'll show you guys some of the titles, but we got a pretty good restock from them. Mobile Fidelity as well, small restock from Mobile Fidelity. But most of this is actually Rocktober. Beginning of the year, they do Rocktober, which is um, Warner titles. And they give a bunch of exclusive colored vinyl variants to independent record stores. Uh, yeah, to kind of celebrate October, independent record stores. It's kind of a crossover between the two. But they typically do some really cool titles, titles that haven't been done in a long, long time. And yeah, I think... Uh, I think you're going to be shocked at some of the titles if you're not familiar with them. Some of these things, I don't think, you know, there's some talking heads in here. I don't think have ever been repressed. But I'll get to that in a minute. A couple of pre-orders, but not much to tell you guys about. There is a Violent Femmes uh, box set from the self-titled, their debut album, coming out December 1st. It is demos, live cuts, remastering. I think there's the three, three LPs and a seven inch in it, if I'm not mistaken. December 1st. Impex announced the next release from their standard vinyl series, not a one step, but that is Bud Shanks, Barefoot Adventure. Uh, they're doing it as an LP and an SACD, all analog cut by Kevin Gray from the master tape. That's got Carmel Jones on it. That's a pretty solid record uh, and very, World Pacific, I think, originally. Hard to find clean. It's one of those records that I typically never see it in nice shape. World Pacific titles from the 50s, for me anyways, typically are in VG-ish or worse shape. Every now and then you'll get a VG plus copy, but finding near mint World Pacific titles have been the bane of my existence for a long time. Some of them are still on my want list for years and it's not, because I'm waiting for them to come in the door. It's You can't go online and find these things near mint. Some of them are just really difficult. They're doing another reissue of Daft Punk's Random Access Memories. That comes out uh, November 17th. But this version, they've taken all the drums and percussion out of it. I'm not really sure why that's a thing, why anybody would want that, but there's got to be a reason. I like the album. It's a really good record. I don't know how I would feel about them taking all the drums out. That's a weird, that's a weird concept for a record. But okay, they're doing it. It comes out uh, the 17th of November. Uh, the Impex titles, by the way, ship in December, sometime in December. Evanescence, they're doing Fallen, uh, November 17th. Smash Mouths, Fu Yu Mang, that has uh, Walking on the Sun on it, big, big hit. I think it was done as a record store day title a while back, but that's getting a standard release. And actually this was a record store day title 2015, Ween's The Pod. That comes out November 17th. I have a whatnot this Sunday on our whatnot channel. If you click the link below, right below the video, you'll see a link for it. If you've never done one of my whatnots before, it is an auction and I'm auctioning off about 200 items. I've got about 160 up so far. There's a ton of killer stuff in there. It's a lot of Japanese stuff. It's mostly a Japanese auction. There's a Wish You Were Here Master Sound. I've got a 30th Anniversary Dark Side of the Moon. There's a Beatles BC-13 box set. Uh, Robert Ludwig, Led Zeppelin II. Click the link below, you can see what I'm listing. If you've never purchased on Whatnot before, if you've never signed up for Whatnot, if you use that link below, you'll get, I think, 15 bucks off your first purchase using that, clicking that link below. It kind of works as a credit. When you buy something, it doesn't have to be from me, it could be from anybody, they'll automatically give you a discount. But it should be fun. It's gonna be about a six, five, six hour live stream. I think I'm gonna do it here from the store. But yeah, everything starts at 10 bucks and is no reserve. I've got like a run of Japanese Led Zeppelin, tons of Japanese Beatles stuff from different eras, not you know, even some of the older 70s stuff, 60s stuff gonna be up there. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I wanted to show you guys some of it, but as you could see here, I'd have been here till next weekend showing you guys this. So I'm probably gonna do a standalone video showing you guys what is in the whatnot, but you can go online and you can see most of it now. There's gonna be mobile fidelity test pressings in there. Test pressings, 
man, there's all kinds of killer stuff in there. Check the link below, see what's going to be auctioned off. I'll do a video, probably a live stream later on the week going over it. Okay. Keep in mind too, we're still doing ultrasonically cleaning for people. Some records I recommended. This one here, for instance, this Roger Waters, oh my God, in paper sleeves. Records were mint once I got that ground up paper out of the discs, but played perfectly. No damage to them, but they're in paper sleeves, a lot of paper in them. We ultrasonically clean your records. Not only will we clean it, we'll put it in a MoFi sleeve, a Japanese outer sleeve, inspect it. If it's scratched or damaged or warped, I'll find another one that is not scratched, damaged, or warped, and I will send you that instead. So we offer that on the website. You can just click below any item on there and you'll see the option to add it. It's per disc. So pretty good service, especially uh, depending on what you buy. Some records are better than others. Some records have high return rates, have defect rates. Some aren't, but I can tell you just the Roger Waters and I'll talk about it in a minute. Paper sleeves, very dirty. Uh, and we're still doing international shipping. Try that out. You know, uh, it's relatively new for us, but we're shipping everywhere in the world now. Well, I think there's 20 countries we don't ship to. Russia, North Korea, a couple of small island countries, but for the most part, we ship everywhere. And it is, especially Europe, Canada, Mexico, it is very affordable. All your VAT, taxes, everything are paid up front, so there's no bills, no customs charges, no duties, no no charges after the fact, and it is extremely quick. It all happens via uh, DHL Worldwide Expedited, which is one to, one to three days. So it's a pretty quick turnaround time. All right, let's get into this week's new arrivals. I'll get to this here in a second. Let me try to crack out one of these rows. I'm gonna start with the Roger Waters Dark Side of the Moon remake. I say remake very loosely. I had a chance to listen to this already. Four tracks have been previewed. This is a bizarre record. It just is. Parts of this record I love, where he's actually singing and there's song happening. This is a really good record. But there is, there is just times where he's doing like poetry and spoken word stuff for four or five minutes that I could do without personally. Side four, which is, unlabeled. It could have been its own record. Side four is kind of an avant-garde, God, how do I describe it? There's a, he's, he's talking, he's doing spoken word stuff. There's birds, there's trains going by. It's not music. Side four is kind of a, it's out there. There's a part where like a train goes by and he's like, oh, he gets like real shocked. <laughs> you gotta hear it. It's Really bizarre. I don't know what to make of it, but like at the beginning, you probably heard the track online speak to me. They demoed it. You know, you can get it streaming. It starts with like three minutes of like spoken word, which is like, uh, I'm not nuts about, but then when he starts singing, I love his older, I love his, his voice at this point in time. It's nothing like his earlier voice, but it kind of has that Johnny Cash vibe towards the end when he was doing stuff like Hurt and those American recording session stunt stuff. He kind of has that broken down, weathered voice, and I actually really dig it. I wish they did a little less spoken word stuff on it, but there we are. This is the indie exclusive, by the way, on blue vinyl. The Grateful Dead. This is part of the Rocktober stuff. This is uh, Madison Square Garden, 1981. This is limited to 10,000. I don't know if they're numbered. Maybe on the inside, not on the outside, but limited edition of 10,000. Madison Square Garden, uh, 1981. What is this? One, two, three, four. This is a five disc set. Out of all the Rocktober title stuff, that is by far and away the best seller we've had so far. So that's the one you'd want to get before the rest. Also for Rocktober, on Splatter Vinyl, we've got Yes Singles, featuring Owner of a Lonely Heart, Roundabout, Your Move, on Splatter Vinyl. Another popular pre-order. This is Van Halen, but this is all the albums that cost a fortune to own. So this is the later stuff. You've got 5150. Uh, let's see, for Unlawful Carnal Knowledge, Balanced, which is like a $400 record. 
There's a disc of studio rarities and OU812. So, five LPs mastered from the original tapes by Bernie Grunman. I wonder if this is analog. You know, the original, or the, the $25 ones that are in print now are all analog. And I want to say those were done by Chris Bellman, but those are all analog cuts as well. It'd be kind of cool if they continued that with this and these were all analog. They might be. Remastered from the original tapes by Bernie Grunman. I mean, if you send Bernie a tape, he's going to cut it from that. More than likely, he's not going to cut it from a file. Okay, let me show you guys some of the uh, Mobile Fidelity restock. An amazing title, a must-own, Bill Withers, live at Carnegie Hall. They did an amazing job on this. I thought it was out of print, but here it is. One of my all-time favorite Mobile Fidelity of any era, Bill Withers' greatest hits. I talk about it all the time. It is an amazing-sounding record. I don't care... If I put this on to this day on a Saturday, there's 30 people in the store, I'm going to sell five copies of this. It sounds really, really good. I highly recommend it. Actually, this is kind of cool. This is like a Mobile Fidelity restock of like some of their bangers. This is like their premium stuff. Another title that was $500 until they remanufactured it. Miles Davis, in a stylent way, this is by far and away the definitive version of this record. Uh, Men at Work, I don't think I've listened to this in 10 years, so I'm not going to comment on the sound quality of this. But this, actually, this has uh, got the new sparse code on it. This is analog. This is done from a safety, but it's a 30 IPS analog copy from the analog console to the lathe. So this is a uh, all analog mobile fidelity. Again, another amazing sounding mobile fidelity. Bob Dylan's Blood on the Tracks. They did an amazing job on this. Same thing with this Dire Straits. It sounds really good. This is a digital low-res recording to begin with. This is kind of cool. Digital clone of the Sony 1630 U-Matic Digital Master. Antlock console to lathe. But they did do a great job with Brothers in Arms. Here is another one that I'm going to do a more in-depth review on it, but I... This is another great Mobile Fidelity title. Whitney Houston's self-titled Whitney. This is a super vinyl disc. So on super vinyl, like a one step, but standard 33 RPM. Really, really good sounding. And I love Whitney Houston. This is a great record. I'm going to do an in-depth review on this, but I recommend that. Willie Nelson, who can't tell you about that. Don't, I haven't, maybe I've never listened to it. Jefferson Airplane's Volunteers. The Miles Davis, Round About Midnight. They're kind of doing all the Miles Davis stuff, and pretty much all the Miles Davis stuff they've done is definitive. I won't say all of them, but most of them are unbelievably good. This is a title that I thought they'd, you know, discontinue like, what, 10 years ago? But here it is, back in print. Now, this is actually an analog cut. I love the sparse code. This is a great idea. I'm really glad that... I hammered it for as long as I did when the whole shit explosion happened, uh, 2022. But this is fantastic that I can look on the back of this record, 15 IPS analog master tape cut from the analog console to lathe. Little Feet's self-titled. Miles Davis, Sorcerer. Some of the jackets are older, even though they're reissuing them and they haven't updated the sparse code, but I believe all the Miles Davis stuff is DSD. Okay, the Miles Davis stuff. Bill, Evan, uh, Bill Withers, great, great, great. Some good stuff here. Okay, more Rocktober titles. Buffalo Springfield again. This is crystal clear vinyl. Oh my God, we got more sparse code action here. It's fantastic. It makes my job so easy. This is all analog, mastered from the original tapes by Chris Bellman. Oh my God, we got notes and everything. Analog for $25. Woo! Oh yeah, no more sparse code. Okay, but a very, very difficult album to get because the originals are just few and far between. This is The Band's Last Waltz with kind of a replica cover, linen cover with the foil embossing. What is this? 45th anniversary, limited edition. With the 20, 2002 remixes overseen by Robbie Robertson. 
part of Rocktober. The Monkeys Greatest Hits. This is on Yellow Flame Vinyl. We've got the MC5. Kick out the jams, Effer. No more information on this except for it's on red and clear splatter. That's kind of cool. Kind of goes really well with the album cover. Steve Miller Band, The Joker on gold vinyl. This is a 50th anniversary pressing. This is actually just a restock. I think we've got a couple restocks in here just mixed in. This is just the standard Doors LA Woman, but it's been out of print for a while or awaiting repress for probably at least a couple years. Same thing with ACDC's Back in Black. Just been awaiting repress, got it back. Okay, this is a really popular title. I know all my employees have loaded up on it. Uh, not my thing personally, but they all seem to think it's great. Mac Miller's NPR Music. This is the uh, Tiny Desk Concert. You know how they do these YouTube videos where a band goes in and plays in like a cramped office? That's this. Rocktober title again. We've got Aha! Hunting High and Low, featuring classic hits, Take On Me. That's pretty much the hit in the United States anyways. Okay, limited edition Sunset Orange of Vinyl. The Cars, greatest hits. That's just what I needed. Okay, uh, let's see, on Magic Red Vinyl. It's magic, magic red. More Mac Miller. We got all kinds of Mac Miller anniversary stuff coming out. This is the five year anniversary of swimming. Comes in this kind of small box set type deal with a foil cover. We've got Ghosts. Infinitesimum. 10th anniversary on Tangerine Vinyl. This is the Independent Record Store Day exclusive. Foreigner. Self-titled, Rocktober, uh, crystal clear vinyl. Coheed and Cambria, this is gonna be popular. 20th, 20th anniversary on lavender vinyl, In Keeping Secrets of Silent Earth, number three. This is an RSD title, so exclusive to record, record store day stores. More Mac Miller, this is the one everybody wants, his by far and away most popular, The Divine Feminine. We've got, this is a box of sin. This is Disco Discharge Presents Full Length Gay Clubbing, 1980 to 1989. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that. It's a pretty good uh, comp. Let's see, LP3, Relax, Alternative Joys and Boys with Toys, LP2, Boys Town. Okay, we can't read all of these, but uh, there it is. 24 original extended versions. Man, it's like, a, uh, it's like a nightclub starter set right there. The best of ZZ Top on Blue Jean Blue Vinyl. ZZ Top's greatest hits. Bad Company, self-titled uh, on Crystal Clear Vinyl. Bad Company, 10 from 6. Comes out on 10-6, huh? It's like it was almost planned that way. On Milky Clear Vinyl. This is a restock, but I believe this is from the Analog Master that was done a while back. That is Crosby, Stills, and Nash, the Couch Album. I think Chris Bellman did this originally, but Affordable, and I believe it's the Analog Master. Metallica, Master of Puppets, just a restock of a key title. Mac Miller's Circles. This is an independent indie store exclusive. What do we got here? Some of these actually, I think three of these are restocks. We got the, the 50th anniversary of Funkadelic's Maggot Brain. Bill Evans from left to right, this is kind of a cool record. Playing the Fender Rhodes piano in one hand and a Steinway in the other on Elemental. Metallica's The Black Album. 
This is probably not a restock, but the way these are done, this is the Oingo Boingo's Boingo. This is a limited edition of 500 on red and silver marble vinyl. This is uh, Rubel and Masters. I've showed this a few times, but he does press runs of 500 copies, but he does different color variations. So this is the red and silver marble variant. I could have showed this album four times in the past, all different color variants. I've got a couple of Boingo Boingo collectors that are pretty fanatical and they just eat it up. You know, they love having 20 reissues of that record. Claire Rosencrantz, just because. Now on a side note, there is a ton of new arrivals that have not even come in yet for me to show you guys. There's two Blue Note Tone Poets due in later on in the week, you know. Uh, Jackie McLean's Demon Dance, but I should have them later on in the week. You know, I film this on a Wednesday. You guys see it on a Thursday. Sometimes I don't get stuff until Thursday or Friday, closer to release. Matchbox, oh, excuse me, Stone Pep, Stone Temple Pilots, thank you. This is their greatest hits set on vinyl for the first time. Hmm. Colored vinyl, but it doesn't say what color. Iron Butterflies, Inagata De Vida, on crystal clear vinyl. This used to be a record that I had like 25 copies of in the bin and nobody bought it, but I went over there when this was announced and I think I maybe only have a copy or two. It's kind of like uh, Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA. I used to have like, I would count that by the inch, but again, a, a record that just kind of dried up and I don't really have a ton of anymore. Matchbox 20. Their big album, Clear Vinyl as well. Yeah, Crystal Clear Vinyl, yourself or someone like you. I'm pretty sure, although they did not announce it, but Kevin Gray said he recently did, for Rhino, a Van Morrison Astro Weeks, a new fresh cut of it from the original master tape, but he kind of let it spill out that it hadn't come out yet. And then lo and behold, like a couple weeks later, they announced, actually, uh, we're going to find out right now. Beautiful. This might be the Kevin Gray cut. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Kevin Gray at Coherent Audio on olive vinyl for $25 cut from the master tape. I'm sure that sounds fantastic. Again, Never been reissued. The Talking Heads, True Stories on red vinyl. We've got The Talking Heads, Little Creatures, fantastic record on the road to nowhere on blue vinyl. MC5, Back in the USA on clear vinyl. Mac Miller, Good AM on green vinyl. This is on spring green vinyl. Another Rocktober title, we've got Portugal the Man's Woodstock on clear vinyl. I have a lot of hope for this series. So the Ohio, excuse me, Org, who did the Bernie Grumman cut uh, Nirvana stuff, they did a lot of that audiophile stuff. So, I mean, they kind of have sound quality as a focus in their company. They're doing an extensive reissue campaign for Westbound who's kind of notorious for having crummy reissues. Now, the first title so far is The Ohio Player's uh, Pleasure. But classic Westbound Masters restored and remastered with care. So they're more than likely digital, but hopefully they're nice, strong, clean transfers, and they sound great because we need to get some nice, high-quality sounding Funkadelic. MC5, high time on Splatter Vinyl. Clear and yellow splatter vinyl. This is a restock. Linda Ronstadt's Controns de Mi Padre. Too short. Shorty the Pimp. This is from Get On Down. This is a certified classic part of the... Oh man, they only are doing a thousand of these things. This is 917 of a thousand. Numbered on the Obi there on the back. 
This is Elena Miles. Featuring the hit single, Black Velvet. Numbered 504 here. This is numbered to 1,500 copies. We've got two chains. Whatever the hell is this called? Based on a TRU story. True story. However that goes in the bin. Okay, we've got... Freeway, Philadelphia Freeway, part of the Hip Hop 50th series. I love carrying these titles. They're popular. They're in demand. I just don't know what the hell I'm looking at. Okay, everybody's going to want this, right? This is NSYNC's Home for Christmas. Oh, look at that big old smile from Justin there. What if he looks back on these and says to himself, man, these are some dorky looking poses. Come on. Huh? You know he does. But he got paid, so I don't think he minds. Polvo Shapes, limited edition of Violet Vinyl. Polvo Exploded Drawing. The Ventures Greatest Hits. Two LP set. Jazz Hands, Bob James. 180 gram black vinyl, audio file pressing. According to the hype sticker, it doesn't say what makes it an audio file pressing, but it's on the hype sticker, so, you know. There you go. We've got Of Mice and Men, Tether, limited to a thousand. This is a splatter variant, white, purple, and black splatter variant. We've got Sufjan Stevens. So this is newest record, includes a 48 page book of the original artwork and essays. This is Javelin. Okay, got a re actually a restock on a few things Steely Dan, SACD, Can't Buy a Thrill, Jimi Hendrix Experience, RU Experience, UHQR. That is probably close to being sold out everywhere. I got a restock of Love Supreme and Steely Dan's Pretzel Logic. Also, the box sets of uh, Belafonte at Carnegie Hall and the Answer Maze Royal Ballet, an amazing sounding record. The classic uh, box set at 45 RPM before that was reissued was like a thousand bucks. So, really in demand. I also got this is a new arrival Meat Puppets in a car. I think I ordered this on accident because I typically don't order seven inches, but I ordered this particular one. I try to get all the Meat Puppets stuff. They're a local Tempe band. So, one of the biggest. Bigger, not the biggest, but one of the bigger bands to come out of Phoenix. So let me move this stuff out of the way. Okay, this is a restock, all analog, cut from the master tape by Chris Bellman, Van Halen's 1984. This was kind of a waiting repress for a while. We've got the Eagles, greatest hits. This is also cut from the original analog master tapes. Been waiting on this restock for a while. Most of these are not restocks. Well, until you get to the analog production stuff. A day to remember. This is Indie Store, Record Store, exclusive, Pink Splatter Vinyl by Kraft. Paula Cole, analog, excuse me, remastered uh, by Kevin Gray. It's going to be digital because it's actually, okay, let me backtrack. Original mastering by Bob, Bob Ludwig, cut by Kevin Gray, pressed at RTI. But I talked about this last week. This record sounds really good. Listen to it at home again. But uh, this has the big hit on it, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone. Another restock. I haven't had this, I want to say, in almost three years. Oasis, what's the story? Morning Glory. We're getting to the point now where they're really starting to get some back catalog stuff in print to the point where I don't have any place to put it. Red Hot Chili Peppers, Greatest Hits. That's just another restock. Danny Elfman. This is Solo. So this is limited edition on blue and black vinyl. Rebellion Remastered. This is a restock, but I ordered the very last amount of these that the distributor had. I want to say these probably won't get repressed based off of the past. In the past, Run Out Groove 
doesn't keep redoing things. They typically do one order and that's it. Also, these are numbered. This is 6194. They would do, in the beginning, they would do a limited run of X amount based on what people ordered. That's how it was. So if they got pre-orders for 875 of them, that's how many they made. Then they started doing like a little larger print runs, which this in the Curtis Mayfield Superfly is one of them. But this is all analog cut from the master tapes by Kevin Gray, and it sounds awesome. You're really gonna like the way this thing sounds. You've got the standard disc, and then you've got a bonus disc. I don't know if the bonus disc was done analog, but disc one was. Both were cut by Kevin Gray. But I don't think, I think this is about done. So I wanted to bring you guys, you know, this is a record I've been recommending for a long time, and I wanted to tell people before they no longer had a chance to get it. Gregory Porter, Liquid Spirit, 10th Anniversary Special Edition on Blue Note. Ooh. Electronic, get the message, the best of. This is, having a brain fart, the lead singer of New Order, uh, Bernard, uh, oh my God, I should definitely not be. I'll stop thinking about it and then I'll pop right in my head. But the lead singer in New Order, this was one of his side projects. Uh, this is a greatest hits of the band. They did a couple albums, but uh, yeah, here it is. First time on vinyl, was this, this was like a CD originally only. Elvis, the Christmas album. I want to say Sumner, but I feel like that's wrong. God, I'm going to go with that. Elvis, Christmas album. This is just a Sony reissue. Elvis, the wonderful world of Christmas, just in time for Christmas. Oh, look at that. I like on the back how they're advertising uh, other current reissues, including Elvis on tour. Something that Elvis Records kind of always did was advertise other records. Grave diggers, six feet deep. Looks like he's going to cut you. Jason Isbell, Southeastern. This is the box set version. I showed you guys the regular album last week. This includes demos, more records, live, a live set, demos, and a 24-page booklet. I'll stuff this to the back, which is the, I'll show you at the end, the Analog Productions restock. There may be some new titles in there. I don't believe so, though. Run the Jewels. This is the 10th anniversary edition, original album plus the instrumental album on split colored vinyl. This is Run the Jewels. Is this Run the Jewels 1? Cocaine Bear, Ray Liotta's last movie. This is just a one LP set. One of the greatest all-time Christmas albums. Unfortunately, this is a picture disc, although picture discs sound better than they did in the 70s and 80s. But this is a, a Christmas gift for you from Phil Spector. Great, great, great Christmas album. I probably have a standard vinyl version of this as well. Although they kind of look cool spinning around on the on the table. Willie Henderson's Funky Chicken, another org reissue. Mastered from the original tapes by Dennis Drake at the Music Lab. I've listened to this in the store a few times for the holidays. It's interesting. This is Bob Dylan's Christmas in the Heart. Bob Dylan doing Christmas tunes. It's almost kind of William Shatner-esque at this point when you listen to it. I mean, I think so, but you know. Mary J. Blige, A Merry Christmas. First time on vinyl includes two songs never released. Kind of all the uh, Christmas, uh, The Grinch, original motion picture soundtrack. This is like right when you get all the, but this is the best time to be honest, to buy Christmas stuff. If you want Christmas tunes and you don't have any, and you roll around a week or two before Christmas, you're gonna be left with like the dregs. Jazz Piano Christmas. Let's see, limited edition gold vinyl on vinyl for the first time ever, offered as an LP.
Joni Mitchell, the latest in the archive box sets. This is uh, the volume three, the Asylum Years. So four LP set. Joe Bonamassa, Blues Deluxe, of Volume 2. We've got a reissue of Mud Honey Super Fuzz. This is a mustard yellow vinyl variant on Sub Pop. Pantera, live at Dymo Open Air, 1998. We've got Halloween's Trick or Treat. Oh no, excuse me. This is uh kind of looks like that Halloween album. This is uh the original music score by Fastway. Trick or treat, orange with black swirl pressing, limited to 750 hand numbered copies. Oh, this is low. This is 34 of 750. It's on uh gold vinyl or gold uh gold sharpie. The Blood Brothers. Burn something, something, something is the name of that record. We've got Testament live at Dymo Open Air 1997. Redman, Redman, Redman. What the album? That's the name. This, this is Redman's What the Album, part of the Def Jam 50th anniversary of hip hop. Big pun, capital punishment. You know what, man, it's, again, I'm not a hip hop fan. I'm not trying to, you guys probably know this at this point, but it is super cool that they're putting this stuff in print, man. It's so difficult having conversations to people, you know, why these albums aren't in print, because they should be in print. They are in demand and not easy to find. This is Lovage, Timber Timber. I mean, they're in demand. That hit, you know, I don't sell a ton of hip hop online, but it goes like crazy here in the store. Megadeth Unplugged in Boston Picture Disc, 2001. This is Laffy, typical of me. And Falling in Reverse, Fashionably Late. Okay, this is on clear with hot pink splatter. I think we've got, yeah, this is an analog productions restock. Unbelievably killer sounding record. John Lee Hooker from the original master tape. This is a demo record if I've ever heard one. This is the healer. They did it as a 33, not analog productions, but Kraft did it. That is actually in print in all analog as well. Stykowski's. Rhapsodies. This is a 45 RPM living stereo. Here's another great sounding record, which is not, you don't find a ton of great sounding blues records, but this is one of them. John Lee Hooker's It Serves You Right to Suffer. Willie Nelson's Stardust. 2 LP, 45 RPM. I've got the Mobile Fidelity, which is a 33. One of my top five demo discs when I'm checking out new gear, that is Roger Waters' Amused to Death at 33 RPM. There's a 45 RPM box set of this as well. Killer sounding record. A lot of prestige reissues. George Wallington Quintet. Actually, I think this might be new. Jazz for the Carriage Trade. Sikowski and Wagner. The Sound of. Bill Evans at the Montreux Jazz Festival. This is the 33 RPM. They did it as a 45. I don't know if that's still in print. It might be. Phil Woods and Donald Byrd, the Young Bloods. One of those high dollar, very in demand, Mercury, excuse me, RCA Living Stereo titles. That is a Respighi's Pines of Rome. This is a very, very, very dynamic record. It goes from really quiet to really loud. <laughs> wow, I got some Beach Boys restocks. This is amazing. I haven't had these in years. Little Deuce Coop, the Beach Boys. Highly recommend the Beach Boys stuff that they did. Really good. 
the Royal Ballet. We've got Ernest Anserme on my top 100 infrared analog records you should own. Unbelievably killer sounding classical record. The originals are like three, four grand. Perfect time for the holidays. It's got the Swan Lake, the Nutcracker, Sleeping Beauty, but a really, really good record. Another really good record. I know I'm saying a really good record, but these are all really, really good records. Analog Productions, it's an audio file label. They do everything with the top mastering engineers, heavy cardboard covers, all analog, almost always. So it's like the recipe to make good sounding records, right? Herbie Hancock's Headhunters. This is the 33 RPM version. This has the hit version of Watermelon Man, as opposed to his first record, which had the non-hit version of Watermelon Man. Julie is her name, volume two. This is the 45 RPM. Actually, I played a played that in the store maybe last weekend. Sold it right off the turntable. Had an open copy. I saw it in the used bin. I'm like, oh, let's put this on. Kenny Burrell, Bluesy Burrell. When the prestige stuff went out of print, this was actually the record that went for the most money. This was close to a $400 record at that point in time. Out of all 50 prestige titles, that was the one that went for the most money. Lightning Hopkins, going away. Arnett Cobbs, Ballads by Cobbs. Moodsville, number 14. Hank Mobley's, Mobley's second message. Really a killer record. All the prestige Hank Mobley stuff's great. The tenor scene, Eddie uh, Lockjaw Davis and uh, Johnny, Johnny, uh, Johnny Griffin. Elvis, Stereo, 1957. This is an amazing sounding record. It'll blow your mind. Really, really good to hear this early Elvis at this level of fidelity. Really recommend that record. Doesn't have all the hits like the 24 karat hits, but the fidelity on that's overall way better. Uh, Reiner, Spain. Brahms Violin Concertos. The most expensive RCA Living Stereo that's not the box set, the uh, Royal Ballet, and that is Faust Ballet Music in the Carmen Suite. Unbelievably killer sounding record. Really, really good. Highly recommend it. Guy bought it the, uh, a couple weeks back from me, came in the store and wanted like four more. He's like, you got something? You know, I'm not a classical guy. But how about four more records that are like that? I loved it. Lightning Hopkins, Lightning. So good record to start off with. You know the music, even if you don't think you do. Gene Emmons, The Wonderful Moods of. Arnett Cobbs, Party Time. Mahler's Symphony Number no. 4. That's a dupe. Booker Irvin, The Freedom Book. The most expensive record on the Prestige label, if you found an original, that is Tommy Flanagan's Overseas. And this just wipes the floor with the original. I know because I recently finally got a nice clean original of that for my collection, and it was a lackluster. Shahrazad. This is the 45 RPM version. Unbelievably highly recommend this record. It's killer. Jeff Beck's Wired. This is the 45 RPM. Blow by Blow. This is also the 45 RPM. All the Miles Davis, Sonny Rollins, Prestige stuff is great. Cooking, no exception. Same thing with the Coltrane. Coltrane with the Red Garland Trio. Actually, this is probably one of the most difficult original Coltrane. You know, if you go hunt out an original. This title uh, eluded me for quite some time. Stevie Ray Vaughan's In Step. This is the 33 RPM version. Prokiov, Stravinsky, Song of the Nightingale. All the RCA living stereos are great. Saxophone Colossus, Sonny Rollins. Again, all the Prestige 2, by the way, are all analog cut by Kevin Gray from the original master tape. Saxophone Colossus. Probably considered the best record on Prestige of all time. If not, it's like the top one or two, but Saxophone Colossus is kind of a must-have. The French, the French Touch. 
Harry Belafonte live at Carnegie Hall. I also got the uh, box set of it at 45 RPM. This is the 33 RPM. I want to say the 45 RPM might actually have some bonus tracks. I'd have to look at that though. There might have been some extras included on that. Lightning Hopkins, Soul Blues. And last but not least, Benny Goodman's Groovin' with Golson. Did I say Benny Goodman? It was a rough day. Rough day today. Benny Golson's Groovin' with Golson. Okay, I got it. Just to let you guys know, all this stuff came from five hours ago. It took four people nonstop working just to be able to get this processed and prepped to show you guys on today's video. And again, most of this week's new arrivals, not most, but a good chunk of this week's new arrivals haven't even got here yet. Okay, so look for the video later on in the week for the WhatNot auction. Uh, all this stuff can be purchased online at the website at theingroove.com. Until next time.